Hey guys and girls, Bored now back with Rachel McDonald. So on this video, we're going to be talking about Final Destination 2 as we continue on with the franchise. So the first of the sequels. And for many people, this is the best of the franchise. That is a popular opinion. So it obviously has some continuity with the first film. Quite a lot. It references the first film a fair bit. So this is the one that actually starts on the freeway with that really memorable, um, very Pile intricate up. scene on, on the freeway. Lots yeah. of different things going on, lots of misdirection. But similar to the first film, you have the thing of the character of Kimberly, played by AJ Cook, who seems to have iterative powers where she can see the future, she can see everyone's fate. So a bit like we had the incident on the plane in the first film that led to the plot of the movie where the survivors are in danger of deaths coming for them to recorrect the, the universe. We do that with the freeway scene in, in this where you've got all these different cars and characters, but the people who were supposed to be killed off who survive are then death comes back a second time to try and take them out in order and it gets even more wacky it gets even more insane with some of the kills than from the first film we bring back Ali Lata as Clear River I only realized actually watching it then the surname's River I know Clear, Clear River, River yeah. very cheesy um <laughs> But she comes back and she becomes almost like the expert because she survived the first film. They they get her out of a mental asylum. This to be the best Final Destination 2. Uh, best Final Destination film. What do you say, Rachel? I, I disagree with that. For me, the first one will always be the best because I just love it so much and it had so much of an impact on me. That being said... I actually think this is a really fun and pretty strong sequel, especially for a horror movie sequel. Um, so I know that a lot of people find the freeway pileup scarier than the plane crash. And on one hand, I actually understand that. Like anytime on the, I'm on the road now and I see a truck full of logs, it's like, oh God, get in the next lane, drive around it. Like don't, don't drive behind a truck like that and I think that the freeway accident scares people more because it feels more realistic than the plane crash like you are more likely to die on the road than you are in a plane um and I do think that the freeway accident is done very well I think that the way it's filmed is done extremely well like you said there's a lot of misdirection you think oh this person's gonna die oh no wait they're just flying over there okay now this person's going here and I think even the deaths on the freeway are quite fun um i love the return of clear i think she's a stronger character in this than she is in the first one i think they've okay. developed her a little bit more and she feels like she has a little bit more agency and autonomy even though she we do open with her in a mental asylum where she's in there off her own free will uh because you know obviously she's trying to avoid death i think once she gets out and she becomes kind of the de facto leader of the group alongside kimberly that that's really <clears> good I do think the kills in this are fun. I think there are some really interesting ones and some ones that are really fun. That being said, I do feel like this film is not as meaty as the first film. And I don't know if it's to do with the characters. Like, for example, I don't find the lead character massively engaging i like aj cook in fact i actually kind of love aj cook i've seen her in a lot of other things her yeah. role in criminal minds i mean i love jj on criminal minds uh but there's something about her in this film that i don't know just doesn't quite work for me i don't find when, when i watch the first one i'm very attached to alex i'm very attached to clear but when i watch this one i don't feel mm. as attached to kimberly um I'm, I'm not sure why and i think a lot of the other characters don't really do it for me either i don't the mother and son are okay you have the black guy mm. eugene who's obviously supposed to be a little bit like carter because he has that whole you know only i decide my death yeah, you know no true, one's yeah. coming for me motherfucker mm. you know that kind of <laughs> attitude um i will admit i do love the yuppie chick 
a uh, cat who's always on her phone and is always smoking cigarettes. I find her interesting. Yeah, I've seen that actress before. I couldn't figure out what she's out of. She is one of those actresses that does a lot of little bit parts. So you've probably yeah. seen her in like a procedural cop show here or a supernatural show there or something else here. She's yeah, she's kind of one of those faces that she's kind of everywhere. I I thought she looked quite a lot like Rachel Lee Cook. But, I get that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I realized it wasn't her. No. But. Yeah. So I find her entertaining, and I find the uh, the cokehead a little entertaining as well. He's okay. he's pretty funny. But yeah, I just I I think I think the the trap that the Final Destination films fall into is that its premise is only really original in the first film. You know, after that, it's a rinse and repeat of the same formula, which is why I think, you know, the later ones maybe don't get, like, as much praise because you really do start coming just to see the deaths and not to see the characters. But I do think that this film stands out apart from it a little bit because of the way they tie it into the first film. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into spoilers. But I think the way they tie the characters in this film into the characters from the first film is actually done really well and connects the films really well. I do love that we get to see Tony Todd again. I like that he comes out all macabre and creepy and knowing a little too much than he should. And like, is this guy actually deaf? Hmm, we'll have to see. So I really like that. And I do think that the ending is um, interesting, but I don't know that it makes sense. And we're going to talk about that when we get to the end, because I was thinking about it when we were watching it, and I thought about the first movie, and I just kind of went, huh, I think we might have a continuity error. So I do really okay. enjoy Final Destination 2. It is one of my favorite horror movie sequels, but I don't agree that it's the best in the franchise. I don't think anything, for me, will be better than the first one. What about you? How did you go re-watching this? Well, we're, we're in similar places. I think I feel similar, or, although some of the particulars I think we disagree on. Yeah. I'm sort of with you on some of the characters. I, I find some of the characters a bit too annoying or a bit too been there done that type thing yeah. and just not that interesting to watch mm, yeah I, I kind of get that it's going for a more over the top tongue-in-cheek feel which I yeah. don't I, and I quite like that about it but I also mm. just don't find a lot of the characters that entertaining to watch no. Mm. It might be an unpopular opinion because there are some good set pieces in this film, like that freeway set piece. I, I think that probably is the highlight of the film. Yes. Yeah. But actually, I'm going to say maybe I prefer the deaths in the first film overall to the deaths. No, in I, this I one. hear that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah some I, of the deaths. It's hit and miss in this, the deaths. I think some yeah. really stand out and some I just don't think are that good, that impressive. Mm. Um, yeah. Some of the mythology I'm not so keen on. Like, I think they do try and tie it back to the first film a bit too much, which it happens a lot with the first sequel because it feels like maybe they have to do that for the second one, whereas... When you get further along the road, they maybe feel there's a bit less of a reason to do that so much. I just think, I just think it could be its own thing. Like it could just be something where you could have a little bit of a nod to the first film, but not go too far. Final Destination film, you have to try that hard with the plot. I think you are just there for the fun entertaining kills and the set pieces well i guess at this point they hadn't figured that out yet because we are only at the second movie so we hadn't quite moved into like people are coming here for the uh well i, I think stuff. i think they do obviously to a point because it does have a more tongue-in-cheek feel than the first film i think they're and wacky with the kills whereas i, I think the first one was going for a a more serious drama true, which true. with horror moments which is obviously mm. some of the stuff i didn't like as much as you in the first film because i thought it took itself a bit too seriously but mm. I, I would this say overall mm. although it's it's a different sort of film at times i would probably say overall i 
this is roughly on the same level as the first film when it comes to my feelings on it. Okay. I actually, mm. there is a sequel coming up, which I think for me might be the, the best of the franchise. Yeah, if you say number three is the best of the franchise, we're going to have some problems when we get to that because, yeah. I, but I there, won't reveal anything. Yeah, there is something, though, that I am noticing a trend with, with the two of us when it comes to sequels. I seem to really like sequels that very much link into the original. I love it when a sequel brings it back to the original and links in because for me, that's the point of a sequel. You are continuing the story. And yes, you do want to do your own thing to a certain extent, but you also want to link in. Whereas you seem very put off any time a film goes a little too far into connecting with the original. You seem to like sequels to just do their own things. And I find that just a very interesting difference between the two of well, us and seeing how people view sequels and, and what they come to sequels for. I feel like you can just come to them. Like, in a way, it sort of feels like you can watch Final Destination 2 without having seen Final Destination 1. Mm. And Because it, it sort of feels, in a way, like the way you might watch an anthology on TV where, yeah, they do feel like their own thing, like just a mm. one-off. Um, I, I think that's the main reason I think just because you don't have to connect them mm. so okay he, here's a question if this was it if Final Destination was just Final Destination 1 and Final Destination 2 and it didn't go on to be the franchise where it becomes like more about the kills and stuff would you still feel the same way or do you feel this way because the, the franchise has morphed into something different than it was in the beginning the strong suit of the franchise is is the over the top kills because mm. I think it's probably that idea of the premise is very wacky in the first place. It's a very yeah. it, if you sit down and think about it too hard, it is quite a sin, silly sort of premise. Mm. So it just works better if you have a bit of fun with it and. You know, if you get a bit creative with the kills, which... And that might be why some of the sequels are pretty strong, just because they they just let it rip and they do have fun with the kills and then they come up with creative things. Mm. Because I, I think sometimes if you try and turn it into too much of a thrill or too much of like a... almost like a mystery-type story... Mm. especially after the first film there just doesn't seem that much of a point want the franchise to be after the first movie you just want it to just be the kills it doesn't need to be connected to the first movie just needs to just have fun with it is that yeah and, of, and obviously yeah. The, the characters just give me some fun decent characters and, mm. yeah yeah, see, I think, okay, so we'll, we'll start getting into some spoiler talk here because I do want to talk about this connection between the two films and why it doesn't work for you and why I love it. So, like I said, when it comes to sequels, I feel like sequels, they, they do, they need to connect to your first film. There needs to be a reason for their existence. Like, why is this happening after this has already happened? And what I really, I actually really love this. So, 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 so I almost said season one. So the first movie has that whole thing of death's design. Death has a design, it's set, and if you mess with it, death will do everything it can to correct this design. And that's obviously the premise of the movie, is Alex gets this premonition from wherever it is, but it allows him to mess up death's design and then go from there. So in this movie, we find out that every single character we are seeing in this movie was supposed to die before, but didn't die because the survivors from the first flight messed up their death. So, for example, the, the lady that I really like, Kat, was supposed to go to a bed and breakfast yeah. where there was a gas leak and everyone dies, but her bus got into an accident uh, and didn't okay. make it, and the accident was them hitting poor Terry and splattering her across the road. There was the the, the black dude, uh, Eugene, was supposed to substitute for um for someone for a teacher that got shot, but instead of doing that substitution, he was sent to substitute for the teacher who died in Final Destination. So what I really liked is that it showed how big Death's design is, because to <clears throat> me, that makes sense. Death as a concept 
is a is a huge huge thing obviously it's i mean we've said before the only things in life that are absolutely certain are taxes and death so death is coming for you no matter what and if death really does have a design then that design has to reach 7.2 billion people that exist on this earth so for me it absolutely made sense that flight 180 that their non deaths caused a ripple effect and i like that final destination 2 shows that ripple effect and shows that death is so much bigger than what we originally thought see for me with these movies i like all of this stuff i like the concept of death and this idea that death has a design yeah the the, the kills are fun and i'm here for some mystery and some tension but i love the mythology of the movie and so i really like how they linked those two movies and i thought it was a really fun way to link the two movies together and to well, show it's... the after effects of flight 180 so for me that really worked it's not the franchise to be overly clever and <laughs> i i just don't always like all this linking in into... because unless you're something like lost on tv where because it reminds me a little bit of that cuz with that show you get all these different the ripple effects yeah to, yeah and and it's obviously it's one of those where if you rip it apart it wouldn't really you know you wouldn't have so many connections between these characters mm. like in the real world before they get to mm. the island but it just works cuz of the sort of sort of show that lost is really but mm. outside of that in this sort of franchise where it it is a bit more pulpy for me it is a bit more about the kills than the over the topness and mm. the wacky premise like i said I, i think with the first film it probably makes sense taking it reasonably seriously because it is the introduction to this stuff but mm. yeah i just think they go a little bit too far in this second film in trying to connect everything i don't think everything has to be uh, cuz you know like you mentioned it like the terry death you know mm. that that feels so tenuous you know it just seems like they're clutching that straws and does it though because i mean it does make sense it makes sense that if like these people stop death design that there's going to be a ripple effect it can't just stop at this one group it makes sense that it would then spread out so for me there's going to be people on that bus there'll be people on that bus when this when it hit this poor girl so for me yeah it does make sense then that bus crashing then stop this person from then going on to their death because they've already like messed up the link in death's design so i i mean it's going to be really interesting when we get to number 5 when we start talking about this again um and the ripple effect yeah uh, i'm so okay oh well you're in for a treat so yeah so <laughs> so So yeah, so for me, because I mean like if they didn't have them linked, then what would be the point of the sequel? Like it wouldn't have any connection to the original and it well, would no, be you like you can still you can still have some. You can still have obviously Tony Todd's cameo a link mm-hmm. there. You can and you can still have like they do. They bring back the clear character. Mm. Um because that's the thing like I sort of feel although some characters I like in this and some I don't. I I do actually feel that I was more down for that freesome of characters, you know, like Clear, Kimberly and the detect the, the cop guy whatever his name was. Mm. And I just feel like a lot of these other characters are sort of like window dressing and I didn't really Oh, yeah, like I agree. The characters are very thin, but you need a lot of characters for a movie like this because you need to show them mm. dying one at a time. So unfortunately, you are going to end up with characters that are not fantastic and I I that's, do think that yeah. That's mm. maybe another small complaint I have because the mm. deaths in this are quite entertaining some mm. of them at least, but I think they overplay the gimmick a bit at times, the gimmick of trying to be a bit too clever with the kills and trying I to... I do agree with that yeah and some of the like And there is some dodgy stuff. early 2000 CGI as well oh, which yeah yeah doesn't yeah. matter too much in this sort of film because obviously it's meant to be very pulpy but it <laughs> some of the CGI looking back now looks pretty bad but yeah. um but there are some actually some good gut punch moments cuz I actually like the moment 
with the boy outside the dentist. And oh that yeah, that that the, that was. It's like the, the crane machine coming down isn't it, or mm-hmm. something. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and he just that is. I think that is crash. one of the better deaths. Yeah. yeah. Um. So so maybe we'll just talk about some of the deaths. What what were some of your favorite deaths in this in this movie? Which ones did you really like? Well, I think that one, and I would obviously say the freeway one was mm-hmm. that. The freeway one was the standout set piece. Definitely. It was really well directed and so much good misdirection, cutting around the characters. Mm. And once again, because I forgot that it was going to be a thing that it was in her head, because when it started playing out, I thought, okay, they've rushed through that death quite quick. And then Mm. it turns out to be her premonition. Yeah. So... Yeah, the freeway scene is is a standout, and I do actually like about the Final Destination sequels how actually they do keep a certain transport sort of link where, like, different deaths involving vehicles. Yeah. Um, Yeah, because the plane in the first film, obviously you had the bus death in the first film, and that follows on a bit. You've got the freeway here and also a roller coaster in part three. Mm. So there yeah. are like connections there with different sort of transport in a way or vehicles because, you know, the roller coaster in its own way is, is a bit of a ride, a bit of mm. a thrill ride. So stuff like that I actually quite enjoy. I think that mm. works quite well and gives the franchise as a whole a bit of identity and flavor and, you know with with the with the rich the guy who wins the lottery the lotto guy yeah i'm yeah. not so keen on that death scene me no, either i feel weird. like they were trying to recreate the teacher's death scene with that scene you yeah. know like showing all the things go wrong but it was because we'd already done this before it was like and eh, d- yeah. d- it didn't really work yeah i agree plus yeah, the the uh, the, the the ladder in the eye is um is a little 2000 CGI yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> sort of conspiracy Oh, yes, the conspiracy also. theorist guy. Yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah, yeah. And what I find amusing about that scene is the fact that if you were in the shoes of, the, like, people watching that, like, if you mm. were Kimberly watching that, then you would dismiss him as a nut job as oh, well. Oh, yeah. he is crazy the way he's preaching this stuff. It just so happens that he is telling the truth basically Mm. but it's always interesting with those characters because like in in a way he's pointing to real life evidence and he's he is correct but in some ways it's just it just so happens that he's correct on this particular occasion Yes, you know, because yes. it feels like he's the sort of, are going to be right at least once, maybe <laughs> once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> it feels while. like there's so many other things that he's got wrong where he's mm-hmm. just going for the obvious conspiracy theory. But yeah, I think Tony Todd's cameo is as good in this film. I it's not as good, but I always like seeing yeah. Tony Todd, so I'm not going to yeah. complain. Yeah. <laughs> And I think also, again, because it's the second film, like the mystery surrounding him is gone a little bit. Um, so, yeah, but I, I agree with you. I think the freeway scene is very, very well filmed. I think they really get the chaos and the terror of what it must like must be like to be in that kind of situation. I personally still prefer the plane just because I do find the idea of a plane crash okay. scarier. But I do think the freeway is is very, very effective. Um, I think that the the death that you're talking about with the kid getting getting uh, squashed by the glass is actually really, really good as well. Um, a couple of the other deaths I don't think are that great. Uh, the, the billionaire guy, not so much. Also, the mother getting her head stuck in the elevator is... Uh, yeah, I, I mean, didn't think okay. that one was that I, good. I think the it's aftermath right. is funnier um, because yeah. at that point they're talking about you're having to find a pregnant lady and the aftermath is clear and Kat just walk in and they're covered in blood and Kat's just like, can we just find the pregnant lady now, please? And yeah. I'm like, yes, I'm with Kat. That being said... I do like Kat's death mostly because it's unexpected. Um, so Kat's death is the one where she's yeah. trapped in the car after they have the car accident and they, they, they've got the jaws of life and they hit the jaws of life into the side of the car and the airbag yeah. explodes. Because I just think, first of all, that's so ironic, the fact that she's killed by the airbag, which is supposed to protect you. And secondly, yeah. because there's no build-up to it, it's a little bit like Terry's death. It just kind of comes out of nowhere and makes yeah. you go, oh, 
oh, okay. So it's not that the death itself is spectacular, more that I think like the surrounding events are like are really fun. And like I said, I actually love Kat's character. Yeah, I can so, see how they're quite yeah. similar deaths. Like, so I thought that yeah, she's fun. not a bad character. Yeah. She's I love solid. I love when you first see her on the freeway and she's on the phone and she's smoking a cigarette and um, one of the guys from the car throws his joint and his joint goes into her windshield and she's just like, oh, oh, what the fuck? And then she sees him and she sees the cop car and she's like, ah, ah, uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And she's uh-huh. like, you know, <laughs> but I think she's like, she's just a really fun character. She's got another line at one point where she goes out to have a cigarette and someone's like, are you sure you want to go off alone? And she's like, yeah, well, Nora's going to die before me. I mean, she's like, oh, God, yeah. you people have no humor. Yeah, that's- Funny. <laughs> yeah, so I just think yeah, Kat's a fun good. character. Um, the other deaths, you know, I mean, Eugene dies from the explosion in the hospital that also takes Clear out, which I have to say, I was, I knew she was going to die as soon as she left the mental institution. I was like, okay, Claire's going to bite it in this movie, but I was still quite disappointed. Is, I was like, I wanted her to to make it. <laughs> is the Eugene death the one that leads to the baby being born, like the yes. baby actually surviving? They link yes. it. Like, like, yeah, it's that I idea think. Of, I with think death no, no, life. no, no. Remember, they end up finding out that the woman and her baby were never actually in. No, the I, I know they do, but yeah. I'm just saying at the time they play oh, it sure. like that. Yes, I think they do. They yeah, do play yeah. it like that. Yes. So that brings me to the conclusion of the movie because there's obviously there's not that much in depth to cover with this movie, but obviously, so their whole thing was, oh, if the baby's born that was never meant to be born in the freeway, then that's new life. But then. Kimberly continues to have her visions afterwards and then she realizes so it's basically solved by Kimberly decides that if she dies and is resurrected then that is new life and that will break the chain except that doesn't make any sense because the exact same thing happens to Alex at the end of uh at the end of the first movie he's electrocuted he dies and they revive him and the link still continues. So I think they messed up a little bit with that one. Or they forgot the ending to the first movie. Because I don't think that it would actually work. Well, yeah. Because the ending of the first movie, it's a bit unclear what happens anyway. You know, because mm. it's sort of a cliffhanger, if anything. Because you don't know for a fact that he dies. But obviously no, but we do know, yeah, a, by this movie that he has done. Movie, yeah. yeah, so it kind of disproves the other. And I only just realised that watching it this time around because I had watched the, the first one so recently. Yeah. And I just kind of went, hang on, this happened to Alex too. And he still died. So I do think that was a little bit of a writing mess up. Um, and... I think overall this one is still a fun film. It's still a fun film Mm. to watch. Like I said, for me, the connection with the first movie elevates it a little bit because I think that that was a smart way to link it into the first movie and to show why these events are happening to these people. But I do think this one steps down a bit from the first one, at least for me. Mm. It's not as as intense. You know, I don't feel as tense watching it. I don't feel as on edge Mm. Um, a lot of the scenes in this one don't get to me the way the scenes in the first movie do. You know, even though I know it's coming, Terry getting hit by that bus always still just makes me go, oh, God, you know, yeah. and and the teacher's death and everything. Like, the first movie, um, I, 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 I get what you're saying by it taking itself serious too seriously at times, but for me that kind of works because, I, I don't know, I, I just really enjoy the first movie so much. But I do like the second one. I do think it's fun, and I do... Uh, think that it it has fun with its premise and I do like it's a little bit more tongue in cheek but it doesn't measure up to the first one for me but I do still think it's a solid it's a solid sequel but there are still some issues with it I think Mm -hmm. yeah and there's quite a lot of faces in in the film as well Mm. because I'll say this because this will become relevant soon for us but The actress who plays the pregnant woman, she's Mm -hmm. in Six Feet Under, so we will actually be covering Six Feet Mm. Under soon. Yeah, she has a regular role on that. She's in, Mm. like, every season. So we'll see her in Six Feet Under. And, Mm. yeah, there are some faces, like, the guy who, you know, like, 
the ranger who drives her yeah. to the hospital mm -hmm. he, he's out of Battlestar Galactica he's he's in the oh okay Battlestar. he was also in Lois and Clark I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure okay. he's Jimmy Olsen from Lois and Clark the new adventures of Superman so yeah uh, okay very nice mm. very yeah nice. yeah there are yeah. some faces in there and of course AJ um AJ Cook AJ. who is yeah and, and I do Lord. agree she's always very watchable AJ mm. Cook yeah yeah okay so we've covered that. Mm, so, so what would you give this one? What would your rating for this? What, what did you rate the first one? I can't remember. Six. Okay, and I think I gave it an eight. So, what would yeah. you give this one? I'm gonna go with a six for this okay, one. Okay, so it's pretty much on par with the first one for you. Yeah, it's it's a solid sequel. I have some fun with it. I actually enjoyed it more second time around. Like. Mm. But, yeah, it's funny how we disagree on, on certain things, but we agree overall that maybe it's not quite the sequel than some people think it is. Yeah. Like, maybe yeah. it's not quite the best of the franchise. No. So maybe yeah. it gets a bit overrated by some. I agree. For, yeah, for I do think it anyway. does. Yeah. yeah. Well... I think I'm going to agree with you, and I'm going to give this one a Go six. six yeah. yeah, because I, I think that's a fair. Because I, I don't think there's anything spectacularly outstanding about this one, but I also don't think there's anything particularly bad that makes it terrible. I think it's one of those enjoyable horror sequels you can just throw on on an afternoon if you want something, you know, just something easy to watch. Some of the kills are a bit fun. Like yeah. I said, I like Clear Rivers as a final girl, so I like that she comes back. I like the connection to the first movie. I do think, I mean, it's it's it's, de it's decently paced. It's not too long, which I like. It doesn't drag the movie out. I think it's only like an hour and a half. Um, but yeah, but it agreed. for me, it does not live up to the. It's definitely not on par with the original because I love the original so much. Um, and I don't agree with the idea that it's the best of like that. It's the best of the franchise. As we go on, I'll see whether or not I think it's the best of the sequels. Um, but for now, I think six is is fair. You know, a bit above average, a fun movie, but nothing overly spectacular but i did have fun re-watching it final destination three and the whole roller coaster stuff and the sunbeds coming soon oh yes oh so, yeah that's <laughs> soon. so yeah that will be coming up soon and we obviously do other horror franchises we've done the whole of the halloween series we've done the whole of the scream series and we will update every time there's a new entry in either one of those and we also do TV from time to time, like we're covering Buffy at the moment on the channel. We've just done our season two review of Buffy. If you're a fan of that show, go and check it out. But before we go, Rachel, if you want to plug your channel. Yeah, thanks. Uh, guys, you can follow me, Rachel McDonald, video essays covering TV shows and movies. I do have a few horror um, videos on there and a whole lot of dissection on different TV shows. My Tumblr is also linked through there, so you can follow me there. And Keith usually puts a link in the description. So come and follow me everywhere. Okay, thanks, guys. Keep watching horror movies, and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye. <laughs>